In this video, we'll be looking into the pushdown automata module. Uh, we'll be starting this module and we'll understand the definition of PDA, instantaneous description and acceptance of language by PDA. So firstly, understanding the definition of pushdown automation. So we know for every uh, DFA or NFA, for every DFA or NFA, there exists a regular expression, right? So this regular expression is the representation of that particular finite state machine. So this language is accepted, uh, which is called as regular language, right? So similarly, CFL, context-free language, is um, a regular, is a subset of the finite state machine, okay? So it is a subset of regular languages, sorry. So we can effectively model CFL. So uh, FSM cannot be modeled by some of the languages. Like they are um, non-regular languages. So these non CFL consists of automation that defines these non-regular uh, languages. So the automation that defines these non-regular languages is called as uh, pushdown automation. So it is an extension of it is an extension of FSM. But the only uh, like here we have uh, stacks. We make use of stacks here. That is added stack. So in the stack we can perform various operations that could be reading the elements in the stack or pushing the elements onto the stack or popping the elements or the characters from the stack. So, yeah, this is the basic definition of um, PDA. So, the presence of stack in PDA uh, can, re can remember infinite amount of information. So, as you keep on pushing and popping, infinite amount of information could be stored in the uh, PDA. Next, moving on to the definition of, uh, next, moving on to the definition of PDA. So understanding by this uh, block diagram, block model, we can say that there are three main components of PDA that is input tape, stack and finite state control. So here input state, uh, it consumes like whatever the inputs are given. So it consumes the input, it takes the symbol that it uses in the transition. So no input symbol will be uh, con consumed in case of epsilon or lambda which is used as input. Then we have a finite state control here. So it goes from one state to another state or it remains in the same state. Then we have a stack here. So uh, stack replaces the symbol on top of uh, stack replaces the symbol on top of stack by any string. So string can also consist of epsilon. So if epsilon is there, then you need not change anything. So yeah, top of symbol, uh, top of stack symbol can be replaced by two or more symbols. The symbol on uh, top of stack can be replaced by same symbol on the same stack. So this does not change the context of stack. A uh, top of symbol can um, also be replaced by using any other symbol. So each move on PDA depends on three things. So each move on PDA depends on three things. So the first thing here is the current state, like the current state. Then we have the input symbol, like whichever the input symbol is being read by the input tape. Then we have on top of stack, what is the symbol? So by considering these, there could be uh, following actions performed, actions performed on PDA includes like changing from one state to another state. Yes, we can change from one state to another state or remain in the same state. 
and then next action is to replace the symbol on the stack so here the above moves and their uh, corresponding action can be represented as transition function so these could be represented in a form of transition function which comprises of um, delta that is the symbol of transition function we all know that so delta of first we'll write the current state here then we write the input symbol here and then we write the top of stack symbol here so this would be equal to the next state or the same state comma the stack symbol or this can also be written as delta we can interchange these so delta of current state top of state and input symbol should be equal to the next state or the same state followed by a stack symbol so this is how we can depict the changes performed uh, in the pda the transitions being happening in the pda using transition function so next moving on to the definition of pda so here pda is defined as p equals q sigma tau a transition function q not z not and f where q is the set of states yes it's, it's the same in uh, fsm also dfa nfa also then we have sigma set of input alphabets yes this is tau the symbol is read as tau which uh, contains the stack alphabets then we have transition function that is q cross sigma cross cross tau to set of q cross tau cross star tau star then q not being the start state and z not is a subset of tau which has the initial symbol on the stack or the starting symbol on the stack and f is a subset of q which comprises of the final state so let's discuss few transitions um, in the pda so here i have written uh, several transitions being happening so let's see how it is how it what it depicts in pda so the first one says that the pda is in current state q not the input symbol is a here and this belongs to uh, the set of alphabets okay and then we have z here which belongs to tau which is uh, on top of stack the symbol is z here then this is equal to q1 comma az so this means that pda changes from q not to q1 state so pda changes from q0 to q1 state by pushing so here z is there and here we have az so a is being pushed on top of stack right so next coming to the second transition here we have q1 so pda is in the state q1 and the input symbol is b here and on top of stack we have z here this is q1 is equal to q2 comma epsilon so pda changes this means that pda changes from q1 to q2 a transition is happening from one state to another by deleting z value by deleting deleting or popping because pop function is happening on stack right by pop by popping z from top of stack when z is removed from top of stack there's nothing in the stack so we have depicted it as epsilon here so next coming to this transition so uh, on top of uh, the current state is q1 here and the input is empty string here so when we have uh, epsilon we can state that it is empty string so we have a empty string and on top of stack we have z value so this is equal to q2 comma epsilon so the the pda changes from q1 to q2 state and z is popped 
from top of stack so this is how the transition functions are read the transitions are read in pda next coming to we have uh, instantaneous description so this instantaneous description depicts the sequence of moves made by the pda so instantaneous uh, description depicts the sequence of moves made by D pda and it is represented as the symbolical representation of pda is this okay t this way so the instantaneous description is defined as a triple that is equal to q w and rho where q is the state rho is the state contents and w is the input to be scanned so this was about this was about the instantaneous uh, description then looking into uh, let's uh, we, we we need to remember one thing that is if this is a uh, triple then i can write q comma w comma rho should be equal to the whatever the transition is happening so i should consider q w and rho and looking at the transition table i should write some particular output then further if i do the instantaneous description of this again those through suppose if i write x y and z here so again those three uh, like those three elements would be considered and further it would be checked in the description table so if i write for example let's take q not s a a b here and the symbol and on the side i have q1 as and ab so it means that the current state uh, changes from q0 to q1 yes and then so s is on the top s was on the top right so it is replaced by a so a is added on top of the stack and then here i have aab and here i have ab right so it means that uh, only two symbols like ab are scanned so if you look at the transition function of q not s and a you would get q1 as and ab as its uh, output like this this would be the output here so that was about the instantaneous description now we'll look into acceptance of language by pda so pda can accept string w in two methods so there are two methods here so the first method is by uh, acceptance of empty stack hello so let me write it here so the first method is acceptance of empty stack method and the second one i have is acceptance of final state method so language that is accepted by pda by empty stack method is defined as n of p is equal to w q not W Z not over the instantaneous descriptions. It could be zero, one, or n number of instantaneous descriptions. I should finally I should get Q one epsilon and epsilon. It has to be empty strings on the state contents and as well as the input which needs to be scanned. But then the transition should happen from uh should be in the same state. Okay. 
transition should not happen it has to be in the same state so that's what empty stack method so if you if you get a pda in this form then it is accepted then in case of uh, in case of final state method you can write l of p is equal to w uh, a string which should be of the form q not w z not over n number of instantaneous descriptions i should get the final as qf epsilon and rho so where qf should belong to the final state and rho should belong to the tau star set of the input alphabets so this means that over n number of transitions you should finally reach the uh, final state that is that belongs to f and then the all the words needs to be scanned so it has to be an it has to be an empty or string here followed by that z not we should have our all the state contents should be obtained here or whichever on top of the stack whichever contents are there that should be here so that is what acceptance of uh, language by using final state method uh, refers to so i hope you have understood the theoretical um, concepts of um, definition of pda instantaneous description and acceptance of language by pda in the further videos we'll be solving uh, numericals or problems related to acceptance of languages by pda using both the methods so stay tuned to my youtube channel do subscribe if you have any doubts do let me know and if you require the notes please comment down uh, subscribe to my channel thank you